Whoa, that was a little. All right, basically what I, what I want to do is I want to take a look at the chain rule again. And we're, we're going to really, this is, you know, a trivial function. Um, you know, and, I mean, what is it? You know, really, it's just a circle with radius Z, right? Okay, so, but, but you know, it is a, uh, I mean, we could plot this in three dimensions and take a look at it. And, and I think one of the best ways to do that is just, I kind of break this up. So we'll have a ZY or a ZX, a ZY, and the XY plane. Okay, so so just if, if, if I ignore y and just stay in the uh, zx plane, y is equal to zero, so I just get z is equal to x squared, so that's just a good old parabola, right? Okay, and, and same thing happens if I for, just forget about x. Uh, that's kind of a parabola. Yeah, I get the same thing. Um, but really, you know, if when I go back to the xy plane, I mean, I just have my circle, right? And the radius is z. Okay, so so if we take a look at on on the zx uh, side of things, uh, we'll notice that z does change over x. So you know, um, well, I guess it's partial of z. You could get partial f, I guess, if you want. So so we have a, a partial derivative right there. Okay, and we also have a partial derivative with respect to y, too. Okay, and then certainly, you know, right here, you know, implicitly, you know, we have, uh, you know, dy dx as well. Okay, so, um, but the thing is, you know, and, and of course z would be coming out here. Um, it would be sticking right out of the paper, but I guess does dz, if we were to use the chain rule, okay, so y would become y of t and x would become x of t. So, you know, if we wanted to link everything together with the chain rule, I mean, do, do, does this really have any change? I mean, do, do, is there any change that z really goes through? I mean, I mean, the simple answer is no, it doesn't. Okay, I mean, it's just, it's just a flat disk. So like if, if z was four, for example, you know, we just have just a plain flat disk. You know, kind of like this, like here's the x-axis and here's like my CD, you know, sitting there. And, you know, with radius Z. So, um, definitely something to think about. So, why don't we just go ahead and differentiate this thing and we'll see what we get. And I think I might do it on a, another piece of paper. Okay. So, what do we have? So, we have Z of x, y, and that is equal to x squared plus y squared. So there's two ways we can do this. We could just directly um, take the derivative and then use the chain rule. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. Let's just, let's just do exactly that. Let's just go, let's just take the derivative of the entire thing. Okay, and remember that that formula is, well, I'll just write the formula out again. So it'd be, in this case, it'd be partial z against partial x, or dx dt. dt, okay, so here we go. So all this is gonna be, that's just gonna be two x. And then since, you know, I'm actually taking derivative with respect to t, I gotta write dx dt there, just like in the formula. And we'll see here. Okay, so let's link everything together by means of the variable t. Okay, so, you know, we'll just go back here. And, you know, x, that's just going to be equal to cosine t. dx dt, well, that's just going to be negative sine t. So y, that's sine t dy dt is equal to cosine t. So now let's just down the plug and chug. So we got 2 cosine t times dx dt, and that's just negative sine t, plus 2y, which is just y is just sine t, 
and dy is cosine t. And you'll see pretty quick that these things just cancel each other out. Okay? Oops, sorry. So although the partial derivative exists and there is and it, it changes with respect to x and y the uh, whole function you know in itself um, amongst the third variable doesn't change at all okay so it just I mean it's zero and that that really should make sense to you because when we, when we plot everything out we look hey yeah yeah there is a partial derivative z does change over x z changes over y but z does not change with respect to t, which is really just z with respect to y and z, which are or y and x, which are respect to t. You know, okay, so 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 z depends on x and y, and x and y each depend on t. So all in all, yeah, when we, when we look at it that way, it does not change. So I don't know. You know, uh, it's just something to kind of look at. And you know, just keep in mind while you're doing it, because the math is easy. I mean, it's it's really not too too tough. You know, every now and then you'll get a crazy looking partial derivative, but for the most part, you know, just just um, yeah, just just, just uh, kind of visualizing what's going on uh, when you're looking at these things can be uh, valuable later on when we get into some crazier stuff.